as you may see, my workspace is a bit of a mess. It needs a good cleaning, but I'm too lazy to do that. So after going on uh, AliExpress and seeing a wonderful deal for the, Thanks to the small addition price of, of the, seven Canadian the ice dollars, and its charge and discharge I get a circuit. sweeping it now has robot. charge protection, discharge protection, overcurrent, and overvoltage protection. Additionally, because I'm running it through the regulator, it also provides now, a steady stream robot of 5 volts for it to run off of, increasing its performance instead of a 4-volt starting current and slowly See, if I open up death. this robot in heavy air quotes, the first thing you'll notice is that it's nothing close to a robot. There is not a single PCB in this entire robot. Instead, what you have is a charger port, which directly feeds a special battery, which we'll come back to, and two motors. One motor for the air fan, and one motor with a worm gear drive for the two brushes and the turning and drive motor. Now, what makes this battery in here so special? What makes it so special is unlike a standard consumer 18650 cell, it has a tiny sealed lead acid battery, the same style found in car batteries. Now, what makes this so strange is I've never seen a sealed lead acid battery so small, but it's actually quite clever. You see, instead of putting a costly, costly uh, 20 cent charging circuit for an 18650 cell, they can instead completely ignore it and put absolutely no charging circuit whatsoever and have straight five volt USB power go into the battery and hope to God it's going to work. Now, it certainly does work, but it also overcharges and under, uh, overdraws the power from the battery because there's also no cutoff circuit, which means it will go from uh, the 4.2 charged volts that this thing should be all the way up to 5 volts, which it really shouldn't be. It will also go from the 3-ish volt dead battery down to a very, very crisp zero volts and that's probably why this thing runs so so short it really does not last long and it doesn't hold a charge very well and it's dead just like that you see my example the unfortunate part is if it goes dead which happened to me when i first used it you can't tell if it's on or off anymore because the power is no longer sufficient to spin the motor for driving or the air fan which means you can't tell if the button's on or off. So I completely forgot it was on and it went straight down to a flat zero volts. And it really does not work very well after that, but I'm surprised it works at all. If it was an 18650 cell with no charging circuit, it would have probably burnt down my house. So I'd like to put an 18650 cell in so that it would be a little more useful. Now, how am I gonna do that? You see, most 18650 cell devices use a small charger in it, such as this power bank here. Picking up this entire back battery pack with an 18650 cell and a charge and discharge circuit for a measly four Canadian dollars at your local Dollarama. This pack right here has the perfect board for this application as it's super cheap, very, very simple and easy to use. And it's reliable enough that it won't blow up, probably. So that's what my plan is. Just take it apart and bingo. Now you see, disassembly of one of these packs is quite simple. All you do is take your local heavy object and there you go. Now it's open and ready to use. I can't believe that worked. <laughs> oh, I dented the cell. Anyways, ignore the dented cell. It's probably only going to explode. Right here is the board you're looking for. It's got your charger in and your power out. Fortunately, we don't need to use a USB port. We can just take it right off and solder on our new contacts to the rel relative pins. All we need to do is just snip off the wires and put in our new non-sizzling cell if you listen closely. Now that you have the board, it's up to you where you want to go from this. You can just use it for its charging circuit and draw power straight from the cell itself. But if you want a little more performance on this poor performing device, I recommend you fire up your soldering iron and prepare to take off the USB port and link onto the five volt pins onto this board here. 
the beauty of these boards is they do not shut off their regulator. And because of that, they're always outputting 5 volts, which means we don't need to worry about any pesky shut off buttons. Our only shut off button is the one on the robot itself. Now, after remembering what happened last time I tried to desolder one of these USB ports, also known as completely destroying it, I've realized that I've got a bit of extra space on this thing. Maybe I can just, you know, cut away a bit of plastic and tuck it in. So I think I'm going to go with this route, but I am still going to solder on a point to take 5 volts off of this thing. If we take a look at our state-of-the-art photo here, we'll see that the positive pin is on the right and the negative pin is on the left in this orientation. Negative, positive. So we'll run our leads off of there. One down. All right, poorly done, but done nonetheless. It should be more than adequate for this very, very high G-force experiencing block of plastic. You can desolder the battery for later use. Ooh. What kind of saw did I use here? You can take your charger port and get it on out of here. Because we are going to replace it. Now we're going to roughly guesstimate how to bring it down. And it kind of looks like I'm going to just have to remove plastic down to the floor. So let's do that. Now, of course, the safest way I know of doing that with the least long-term side effects is obviously to use the soldering iron. So let's do exactly that. Perfect. Enough. Can do just a tad bit of smoothing. Oh, shit. Just made a bigger hole. Whatever. Good enough. Perfect. Now, to avoid soldering directly to an 18650 cell, what we're going to do is we're going to take our end and we're going to solder it to a small plate before I spot weld the plate to the battery. As for the button, I'm going to remove this horrible strand of wire and replace it with our new solid gauge wire coming from the regulator. Thankfully, uh, this process is very easy due to the fact that the people who made this thing took out all the hard work by labeling positive red wire and negative red wire. It makes it really easy to know what's what. Now we can bust out the spot welder. Just crank up that power. Oh, she went there. Well, it's on enough. It's not like I expect this thing to last. I mean, no, I, I totally, that's why I'm upgrading this thing. It's totally going to work forever. Let's give it a try. Wow. There's some life in this thing. Yeah, it's even got fancy blue glowing Aurora. Oh, went off. Look at that. Awesome. Now. Let's put it back together. We 
But you know what? If you can't hear the rattle anymore, it's probably not an issue. Let's give it a whirl. Look at that. Jesus. Full of life. We'll find out what the charges. All right, well now instead of charging from some strange cord nobody's seen before, it charges from a far less unknown cord known as a micro USB type B, which I'm sure anyone who's had a phone from the days between 2008 to 2018 probably have seen this on the bottom of their phones before USB type C showed up. Uh oh. Well, that's why we've got a hot, hot stick. If you look way in there, just in that little crack, you'll see it is in fact charging. And more powerful than ever. Oh no. I hope that's not spinning backwards. So it absolutely is backwards. Remember what I said about the wonderful labeling of red for positive and red for negative? Yeah, that really, it really isn't as wonderful as I thought it was, clearly. So it looks like we're gonna have to do a quick swap. Now that, that looks a little more accurate. Let's put that back together, call it a day. All right. And that's go. Now everything goes the way it should. What was that? Let's go give it a try.